this, so I do it because of your glory. But, 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 Pastor, wait, that brings me back to Jesus because you have to understand that a lot of people say that when Jesus was on the cross, that's when he crucified, that's when he sacrificed himself. But you've got to remember that before Jesus went on the cross, he went to the garden and said, God, if it be your will, let this cup pass me. But nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. How many know that Jesus sacrificed himself right there before he even got on the cross? Because he had to submit his will. Because he had to submit his will to God. And he had to say, God, even though I don't want to do this, I'm not going to do it. Even though this may feel better, I'm not going to do it. Even though creeping up into her bed may feel good, I'm not going to do it. Even though popping open a spit may feel good, but I'm not going to do it because I want to be free. And it brings me back to this. Jesus understood that he was man. He was a man. So sometimes the old man creeps up. And I remember a time in my life where, where, where God, where, where my old man rose up and, and, and I was at the computer and I was doing sermon notes. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. They acting like, they acting like they don't know that uh, you could be oh, saved but oh. not delivered. Ah. You could be saved but not delivered. Salvation is a totally different thing than deliverance. Anybody ever been at a point where you were saved coming to church every Sunday, preaching, laying hands, ministering, but I was on that computer at three o'clock in the morning trying to do my sermon notes and the old man rose up and said, type in and look at that because that looks good and that looks good and the reason why I started to do this because my dad wasn't in my life I blamed it on him and I thought that he didn't teach me about stuff like this and he didn't teach me how to go this way and, and it made me want to kill myself it made me want to get strangled because why is the person that's supposed to love me the most always hating me why is the person that's supposed to love me the most abandoning me so I tried to commit suicide and my old man said you don't need to die you don't need to live you don't need to live you ain't no preacher you ain't no evangelist you ain't no man of God you ain't know this, you ain't know that When I have to say, God, I will not kill myself Because I'm free in the name of Jesus And maybe, 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 maybe you may be the person that likes drinks And likes to go at the bar and sit and chill And chill and the enemy's like, and the enemy's like just drink it. Just drink it. You sinned last night. You might as well drink it. You know, God don't love you. Drink it. God don't love you. You watched porn last night. You masturbated last night. You might as well drink it. Oh, Rabbi Sandy, you might as well drink it. And, 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 and maybe some of you may be like, all right, devil. You're right. You're right. But stop blaming the devil for everything. Blame yourself. Blame yourself because you are the greatest enemy of yourself. It is you. The devil can't kill you. You can kill yourself. The devil can't take your life. Life. It is up to you whether or not you want to live in Christ or not. And so you may be the person that says, God, I don't want to sin anymore. God, but it keeps happening. So I'm putting it to my mouth. No, I don't want to do it. No, I don't want to do it. But you got to make up in your mind that I want to live for God. I want to live for God. But see, it's not easy. It's a struggle. Because you've got to understand that when you want to break free, when you want to break free from some things, it takes a struggle. And you're like, God, I I need you, but my old man keep rising up. God, I need you, but this thing, I don't want to masturbate anymore. I don't want to watch this no more. I don't want to go there no more. God, I need you, and you've got to understand that it's a process and it's a struggle. <laughs> You see, Minister Shaquille, this is one thing that I acknowledge. I, I, I understand. It says here to surrender or give up of an injury and disadvantage for the sake of something else and to dispose of goods and property regardless of profit. I understand that when you bring a sacrifice, the sacrifice is going to go through pain. Hallelujah. There has to be pain. Hallelujah. And many times it's very difficult for us to bring our sacrifice because every time, hallelujah, God says bring it onto the altar, we try to save it. Hallelujah. But how many know that no matter what you're enduring your body that means that you gotta dispose of your goods you gotta dispose of your property you gotta be ready hallelujah to dispose of anything that is getting between you and your relationship with God you gotta get to a level that no matter what I go through even if I don't profit nothing I don't care how much it costs me to get it I'm willing to give it up because I need to bring it to the altar if it's not working out you gotta bring it to the altar there are things that are broken in your life because you don't wanna bring it to the altar because you're afraid of God saying it is not my will but if you can only bring it to the altar then God will make it explain
acceptable unto him oh, and Carlos. holy. Wait, Pastor Carlos, it, it, you're right because if I don't make up in my mind that I want to do this, then I'll start ministering in the flesh and that my old man starts to take the mic and that old cost. And then I begin to operate under an anointing that is not of God. And I begin to operate under a spirit that is not of God. And I'm transferring my spirit unto other people while I'm laying hands. And you've got to understand that you cannot allow the old man to minister. You've got to get rid of your mess. You've got to get rid of your dirt. And you've got to throw it away. Even though it's going to be a struggle. Even though it's going to be a battle. But you've got to make up in your mind that I'm through with this mess. And that I hate you, devil. I can't stand you. I I hate you. You ain't no goddess. You ain't got nothing on me. You ain't got nothing on me. Sometimes you gotta look the devil in the eye and say, devil, how dare you come at me? I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. I shall be holy. So you mean to say hallelujah that if we have the altar here we have to have the sacrifice so that we can bring the sacrifice unto the altar. So, so I understand hallelujah that, that I need to separate myself from myself. Hallelujah. 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 So then that means, hallelujah, that at all costs, I need to bring my body unto the altar. Hallelujah. And I need to lay it there before the Lord because I understand that I can't be the man of God that I was called to be unless I bring myself to the altar and try to separate myself from myself. Well, you need to understand, like Shaq said, that your greatest enemy is not the devil. Your greatest enemy is yourself. And that's why the devil uses yourself against yourself. That is why, hey, have you ever noticed that when somebody, when you hear the devil speaking in your mind, you don't hear the devil's voice. You hear your voice. You hear your voice. You don't hear the pastor. You don't hear mama. You hear your voice. Why? Because the devil tries to make you feel like it's coming up you. Like if you're making the decision and you know what begins to happen. How many times we've been in a place that you know and you think that you can handle do something you think you're okay you think you know what i got over this thing i don't need to bring it to the altar i conquered it already i'm good i'm walking good so you start walking with it and you start walking with it and you good i'm good not yet don't pull yeah just walk with me just walk with me like everything's good everything's good everything's good because you don't notice that nothing's bad everything looks okay we worship it we pray it we pastor it we evangelize it we miss it. we doing all of god's work we good we good you see we good but you know when it starts getting, you know when it starts getting hot, because the you see, you need to understand that scientifically speaking, the way that you know that you are alive is when you take your hand and you put it on a stove. And when you put it on the stove, what happens is you have nerve endings in your body. And the nerve endings send a message to your mind, to your brain telling you, you, that bird, ow, that hurts. That's how you know you're alive. When somebody's dead, they can't do that anymore. They can't do that. They don't feel it anymore. That's how you know when you're alive. Why do I tell you that? Because your pain is only significance that you're still alive, baby. What you're going through, that you're getting pulled toward the fire. That's only God letting you know that you haven't died. Your purpose hasn't died. Your oh my God, your calling is not dead. You're still alive. But you know what happens? Everything is good. Everything is all good. But you know when it starts getting funny? When the fire when you start getting close to the fire and now you start wait a minute wait a minute what i thought was dead ain't dead but why, why, why you pulling back on me why are you pulling back on me you know why you know why you know why that happens because we try to fake ourselves to think that we are in a level that you're not you try to act like you are in a spiritual level that you're not you are trying to avoid the issues in your life and the way that you avoid the issues are about shanda help me god the way you avoid the issues is by staying away from the fire it's by staying on the outskirts of the fire you see because watch this watch this watch this if, if i got michael near the fire he's in the fire if i got grace she's behind him she's still close to the fire if i got aria aria is still close to the fire she's a little bit farther but she's still closer than me and then i take kilmore and i stand kilmore here you know what happens i'm far from the fire but i can fake the funk because i'm close to kilmore and kilmore is close to aria and aria is close to grace and grace is close to mike and michael is touching the fire so we act like we're touching the fire but we ain't touching the fire we touching the brother that's touching the fire you see when you come to the service what you feel is not the fire of your life it's the fire of that brother and you are just living off the fire and the anointing of somebody else you may be seated you may be seated that's what you gotta understand that because just because you feel the anointing it don't mean that you're pushing towards the fire come on and and and, and it brings me to this it brings me to this it, the, the 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 point is is that it's not that 
I'm, I'm, I'm alive, but sometimes I'm too alive. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm catch you with that right now. Sometimes I'm too alive. You see, you got to understand that because I'm too alive, the things that I used to do will always rise up. So sometimes you've got, because you cannot kill the flesh. Do not let anybody tell you you can kill the flesh. You can only put the flesh under subjection because if you could kill the flesh, you could kill temptation. No, temptation will always be there as long as you live. But you've got to understand that I am too alive. And right now, I've got to put myself under subjection why am i still struggling because i'm too alive i need to be a walking dead man i need to be a walking dead man and say god kill those things that go within me that i can't get rid of kill those things that i can't break free from kill those things i don't want to be too alive but i want to be alive in you i want to be alive in your presence i want to be a walking dead man and this is why we say die hard it's because it's gonna be hard it's gonna be struggle but I've got to die I've got to die to myself I've got to die to lust I've got to die to pornography I've got to die to masturbation I've got to die to hatred I've got to die to envy oh God I want to die I want to die I need you Lord to kill that desire that's been in me ever since I was young because we need to kill generational curses as well because what my daddy used to do it's still within me <laughs> that's why the Bible says present yourself like a living sacrifice the word living means lively but it also means quick let me explain something to you about that word you see this is your problem you try to debate too much with God about what God is trying to make you to do you debate with God back and forth when he's asking you to kill something you're trying to convince God God but why you want me to kill that God but you sure about that God but you know this is this has worked for me my whole life God but how am I going how am I going to function without this thing but you need to understand that when the Bible talks about a living sacrifice he's talking about a quick sacrifice he's talking about I'm going to give God what he's asking and I ain't going to think about it twice. I ain't going to think about it. I ain't, I'm just going to do what he's asking me to do. Because if he's asking me to do it, it's because he's trying to take me to a bigger place. He's trying to take me to a greater place. Hallelujah. What gets to the point where you start to get weak? Hallelujah. And that first thing that you brought to the altar, now you're trying to go back to the altar. Hallelujah. And you're trying to bring it back into your life because I try to function without it. Hallelujah. But I can't be the same. Hallelujah. This is the only thing that I know. And you put that thing right back on your back. Hallelujah. You hear the voice of the Lord saying, bring that thing back to the altar. And you find the battle now because your emotions is going crazy. I want to let you go. Hallelujah. But I'm Ashadana Makaya. I feel like you're so much a part of me. I don't feel alive. Hallelujah. It's because you're afraid of the fire. God is trying to bring you to the fire. He's trying to bring you to another understanding so that you can submit that thing. Hallelujah. On the cross. This is why. My God, how many give worship of God? I know God is talking to somebody. I know God is talking to somebody. This is why. Right here because the Bible says to bring a sacrifice that's alive let me explain something to you I'm going to answer your question that you maybe had for a long time God why is it when I bring to you something it feels like it dies for a month but then it comes back come on somebody why is it that sometimes I feel like I conquered something and I'm completely over it but after three months it comes back you know why because there's things in your life that are never going to die there are things that you're always going to struggle and fight against because if you was to kill all your enemies then you know when that's going to happen when you get to heaven that's when you're going to be able to Kill but every day you're gonna have a new enemy you're gonna have something new to struggle you can't kill everything that's why God said present yourself like a living sacrifice why because it's not necessarily about killing it it is about burning it in the fire it is about allowing it to process you it is allowing that everything that you've been through everything that was supposed to destroy you that you use it now because Professor Peter said that I shall pass through the fire and I shall be purified like gold you need to understand that this is the this is the struggle this is the struggle this is why it's die hard you know why because i want to go to the fire i want to go the spirit man wants to go to the fire because i understand that in the fire is the anointing in the fire is the calling in the fire is the renewing in the fire is the but you know he don't want to go to the fire because if he goes to the fire oh. that means he's gonna die that means that he ain't gonna be able to be activated that means he's gonna be a slave that means that he don't want to be there but you know what it gets to a point that i can't take it anymore and i don't want to struggle back and forth 
So you know what I do? I try to carry him. I try to carry him. And I want to pick him up on my shoulder. But when you get to that point, do you know that that's what God wanted you to get to? Do you know that's what God wanted you to get to? Where you can say, I want to do this, but I don't know how. I want to do this thing. I'm tired of it destroying my life. I'm tired of it going back to it. Lord, I can't do this by myself. The Lord is waiting for that moment. Because that's when you look up and you say, Holy Spirit, come and help me. And when the Holy Spirit comes, He carries it and brings it to the altar and kills it before the altar. But Pastor, wait, you see like how it just helped you? A lot of times we feel like we're ministering, but we're ministering to people. But how come I can't get ministered to? How come I'm still struggling? I just helped you get out of your mess. How come I'm still struggling? How come I'm still going through that thing? That oh gosh, how come I'm still laying hands, but this thing is right in my back? How come I'm still holding my seat? How come I'm still preaching, but this thing is on my back? How come I'm still playing the keyboard, but this thing is on my back? You see, I've got to get to a point where I understand that it's not about ministering to people, but it's about me not being conformed to the world, but being transformed by the renewing of my mind. And pastor, a lot of times people come to you for counseling and they say, pastor, I'm doing all right. I'm good. I want, I want this position. I think I should get this position. Knowing that this thing is right in their back. Knowing that this thing is still there. Pastor, I, th I, think, I think I should take over. I think I should. I think I should be the head of, of of the kids ministry. I think I should be head of the music. You know, the mayor's ain't doing too that too good of a job. You know, she's not doing that well. You know, I want to take it over. I want to be in charge. And you see, that's pride. Because if you understand that you need a fix in yourself, you don't go to no pastor saying, Pastor, I want to be in charge of this. You've got to free yourself and understand that it starts with my mind. So I've got to tell my mind, Devil, loose me. Devil, loose. Me. I don't want to be the same. Devil loose me. I want to get to the altar. I want to get to the altar. But he's pulling me back. I want to get to the altar. I want to get to the altar. And now I've got to say, God, if God be for me, who can be against me? No weapon from against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rise up in condemnation shall not prevail. The kingdom of God suffer violence, but the violence take it by force. You cannot have me. Whew. One thing that we understand now, hallelujah, that is not just necessarily bringing, hallelujah, the sacrifice to the altar, but just like Abraham had to bring his child, his child had to look at him and said, Father, bind me up real good so that I won't resist against you, so that you will not be unfaithful unto God. Sometimes, hallelujah, it's not bringing it to the altar. Sometimes you gotta tie it up sometimes you gotta tie it up sometimes you gotta tie it up sometimes come on tie that up sometimes you gotta tie it up when the enemy wanna hold you back you gotta tie it up when the enemy hallelujah tries to stop you you gotta tie it up I still own them though it still feels good I still own them but you don't need it you don't need it you don't need it because he made me feel good it made me feel right the moment, the Holy Ghost, I need right you. Now.